What is going on? We are working outside today. It's a little chilly out, but I need to get this done. Well, at least I want to get this done. So something I've been wanting to do for a little while is uh, at least clean up, if not rebuild the carburetor on my truck. So that's something we're gonna be doing. Uh, you can see the truck back here. I just popped the hood and uh, we're gonna pull the carburetor off, bring it inside, tear it apart. And uh, hopefully there's nothing wrong with it, but basically just looking to do a good cleaning, replace some of the gaskets inside and go from there. So that wasn't bad at all, just took a couple minutes. Uh, we're gonna take this thing over to the workbench and uh, take a look at it and see what we got. <laughs> all right, so I pulled that uh, gasket off the intake, this guy. So it has a, um, like a square bore intake and a spread bore carburetor. So it has an adapter that goes between the two and then it used this thick, really, really thick gasket to go between them. So um, I might go with a different style gasket if I can find it. Instead of having the three hole, I might see if I can find a four hole one that matches the carburetor better. Uh, if not, I'll just go and try to find one of these. Uh, one thing I do like about the thickness on this, it has these little washers. I don't know if you can see them, but yeah, you can see it. Right there, each corner has a little like crush washer so you can't uh, smash it down too much. Pretty nice. But uh, here's the carburetor. It's a, it's an Edelbrock, but it's a really old one. It's a model 1901. So it is actually just a Rochester Quadrajet that has been gone through by Edelbrock. So this is an old guy. Um, it's, worked, it's worked well. I um, haven't really had any uh, issues with it. Um, other than I don't have the choke set up on it, so it is not the easiest to start when it is cold. Um, hoping to maybe get that figured out uh, over the winter and uh, get this thing all cleaned up. You can see it is it is filthy, it is dirty, dirty. So I'm gonna soak this thing and get it all cleaned up, take it all apart. I bought a rebuild kit. It has a lot of parts in it, which. Uh, Honestly, it's a little scary because I didn't realize there were so many parts inside of this thing. Um, I have taken Hollies apart before, and they are not nearly as complex, apparently, as this. I, what I'm thinking is because the uh, kit is for, like, five different carburetors, it probably just has a ton of extra parts that I won't need. In fact, I don't plan on replacing everything in here. Just uh, basically maybe, like, the top gasket and stuff like that because the... Uh, the way this body comes apart there's a top a, a middle and a bottom so hopefully i have the right kit and i can get this thing all taken care of and cleaned up and she'll be good as new when we go to put it back on but uh, that is going to be one of my winter projects so i guess it's time to tear this thing apart and see how bad it is inside all right so we got everything well not everything but we got some stuff laid out here uh, to help get this going so again what we got is this Edelbrock 1901 sorry for the sun glare there it's a quadrajet carburetor um, I got a rebuild kit from quadrajetparts.com see right here this is a kit 4020 for 1901 1902 so uh, as I had mentioned about that base uh, gasket before this one already has it so no need to search for it and it is the essentially it's open uh, four hole type design comes with a bunch of other gaskets you can see here I think uh, you know these are probably this is probably gonna be the main body in the middle and then um, this one will probably be the top for the air cleaner um, again, it's for two different carburetors, so there is extra parts, I believe. I got a float bowl, a new float bowl. Um, rivets, 
and screws. Uh, this is for the uh, vacuum choke, or the choke, I mean the, uh, not vacuum, well it is vacuum, but uh, it's for the choke. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that because you have to drill the rivets out and then re-rivet it. I don't have a rivet gun, so I'd have to go get one to put that back together. So I don't think I'm gonna be doing that. I'll probably just get it cleaned up. Um, have no idea what these are. Power piston retaining bushing. It's a little white circular piece of plastic. Looks like there's a, it's a small roll pin. Got uh, idle pickup tubes. New idle pickup tubes. Don't know if I need them, but I bought them. They were uh, separate, I believe. And I uh, have no idea what that is. But uh, we're going to see if we can find it in there and replace it. And then there's like uh, a few loose, it's like clips, like wing type clips. I don't know what they are for. So a few of these. And then lastly, there's a measuring like ruler. It's like two and a half inches long. Yeah, millimeters on the back. So for cleanup, I'm just gonna be using uh, Simple Green. I got an old toothbrush. And I got some lacquer thinner. I, I read in one of the part the instructions just a minute ago. Uh, let's see here. It says to soak some parts in um, carb cleaner, except for the float bowl inserts, vacuum brakes, seals, and other parts. Um, then clean it off with compressed air. So we'll see how this is, and we're gonna get working here. I'm just gonna start essentially from the top, and I'm just gonna spray this all down. This is really the only type of uh, like degreaser that I have, so. Hopefully it's good enough to get some of this gunk off. The bottom actually looks really clean, obviously, where it meets the engine and the fuel goes in, but that's not saying a whole lot. That was about 20, 25 minutes, somewhere in there. Looking a lot better. There was a lot of a lot of dirt and grime on this. Some of it was caked up. I used a screwdriver to scrape some of it off, but looking way better. I'm actually gonna take it outside and blow it off with some uh, brake cleaner because I don't think I have any carb cleaner. If I do, I'll use that, but uh, I'm gonna blow this thing off and uh, be right back and should look even better after it's cleaned up. All right, so I just blew it off with some brake clean and just wiped it down with a little rag, get some of the uh, other residue and the cleaner off of it, but it looks way better, as you can see. It's not perfect, it's not brand new, but it looks way better than it did just a you know, half hour ago or so. So hopefully I can dive into it a little more and clean it up even better uh, once it's you know coming apart, but uh, I guess that's it for now. We will start tearing this thing apart, see if I can't get the half apart uh, relatively easily, and then uh, hopefully remember where everything goes. One thing I'm noticing is that you got your primaries that you drive on. The secondaries are a bit sticky. It's probably hard to tell, but there's like it's it's kind of catching right there as it dips in. 
Um, obviously, I'm hardly ever driving this thing at full throttle. It uh, rarely sees the foot to the floor, mainly because this thing eats so much gas. And secondly, it's not fast, so there's no reason to really be driving other th anything other than the speed limit, really. Uh, and that only takes the front barrels, really. So it's almost a part I had to take this uh, there's an internal rod that goes to the choke uh, plate after I take the choke plates off it's right here you can see right there I had to take a little pin uh, a little clip off to get it off this bracket but the thing that's holding it in right now is this pump lever so this looks like it's like the main to me it looks like the main pump because it's driven right off the throttle bracket so um, I can't get this off of here, just the way this is designed. Um, it kind of makes an L here and then it goes up and it makes another like S through this bracket. There's a roll pin here and I'm thinking that's what that roll pin is for. So I'm going to drive this roll pin backwards um, towards the, uh, the body and see if I can't get this whole assembly to lift out. And then I should be able to take this uh, top plate off. Awesome. Worked like a charm. You can see now that bracket's off of there. You can see, maybe, you can see the roll pin. I just pushed it out. It's right there, sticking out now. So now that that's off, this top plate should, I think, come off. I don't think there's anything else holding it in. Oh, there is that, that last piece, which I think you have to twist the top to get it to align, unalign. Not positive, but I think that's what we're going to have to do. Since it doesn't move itself, um, I'm thinking we'll have to move this thing around it. Caught up on the gaskets. Yep, there we go. So I was just hung up on the gasket with these uh, needles. Very cool. Again, I've never seen the uh, the bottom side of one of these before, so this is all new to me. Pretty clean. Bores are pretty clean. And here's what we're left with our main body, and that is that gasket I was assuming was the main body gasket. Just makes sense that it is. plate came right off looks nice and clean looks super clean excellent actually if you look right in here these are all super clean this is probably the cleanest because this is where the fuel is so this is the most used area these are hardly ever used so they're a little bit dirtier I'm gonna see if I can't clean that bore up a little to help that actuation it's it seems better now maybe because I've been playing with it but it, it definitely had a sticky spot when it was like tipping into this throttle here so I'll clean this up with a, a little the toothbrush and everything make sure it's all clean as can be 
I'm not gonna touch anything on here, I don't think. There's some screws, I think those are your idle mixture screws, I think, or air bleeds, I'm not really sure. But they go in right here, which I would assume directly affects the main or the primary throttle bodies or throttle blades, I should say. So I'm not gonna touch those other than I'm gonna try to clean this up some more. There's some gunked up grease on here.